And so there are other dimensions of the kingdom of God. There are actually multiple dimensions of the kingdom of God. The first one that most of us are familiar with is the kingdom of God offers us reconciliation to God. It's restoration of our relationship with him. And I put this one first, even though it's not physical healing, mainly because most of us have been taught that this is the greatest healing of all, that we can be restored to God, that what we lost in Eden can be somehow rediscovered or reclaimed. And so that's, it's crucial that we, that we mention this one. Now in the age to come, that will be even better. Somehow to get to that age to come, we have to pass through the veil of death because that is the last enemy to be destroyed. And so we still have the problem of death in our current age. Thank you, Adam and Eve. But, um, but in the age to come, that forgiveness will be complete. And when we step into the dimension of kingdom, there are many dimensions of our lives that have been touched by the sin that's in the world. Sometimes they are in our spirit and they have to do with us and our relationship with God. We may feel dead to him. We may not be able to connect to him. Uh, we can't hear his voice. I mean, there's a lot of different ways this happens. We may have problems with conscience. We may have mental illness problems as a result of the sin that's in the world. There may be emotional problems, people who are anxious. This is the problem of our modern age. Seemingly everybody is on some kind of a you know, psychoactive drug in order to keep them from going crazy. They're taking Prozac or Xanax or whatever they're taking, and the Lord doesn't want us living that way. I mean, if you have to do it to manage, okay, but that's not the goal. That's just managing the problem until the healing comes. And in so many of our churches today, we've fallen into this therapeutic, and not in a good sense of that word, therapeutic culture where the only thing we're hanging on to is my little bottle of pills until Jesus comes and gets me. That's not what we're looking for here. We're looking for decisive breakthrough, where the anxiety leaves, where the crazy goes away, where the voices in the head are silenced. There's healing for the body. There's healing for broken relationships. All of these things are the result of sin. But God wants us to live in this gift of forgiveness by being freed of guilt or shame. Last night we did a demonstration and a young man came up and he was loaded with shame and guilt, although he'd not actually done anything particularly wrong. He had himself been victimized when he was young. Um, but he had shame all around him and you know, as we prayed with him, there was a very powerful encounter with the Spirit of God. It was a little odd to be doing something that intimate in front of an entire room full of people, but he was touched profoundly by the Spirit, and he said, I don't feel the same. The world looks brighter, and I feel lighter inside. Well, I think, I think most of America could use a download of that. All right, the second thing about this dimension of kingdom and healing is that it's restoration from sickness. Now, this is what we're talking about uh, right now. And so, um, we, as I said, we all kind of gravitate towards physical healing. But, you know, this was prophesied by the prophet Isaiah. Isaiah is the most quoted prophet by Jesus in the Gospels. And in the book of Isaiah, this is one of the passages that Isaiah gives to define the hallmarks. How will you know when he has come? What are the signs? Isaiah 35, starting in verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped when he has come. Then shall the lame leap like a deer, and the tongue of the mute sing for joy. What are the most common healings recorded of Jesus in the New Testament? He healed the blind, he opened the ears of the deaf, he loosed the tongue of the dumb, and he healed cripples. He did other things too, but those are the big four that we hear about over and over and over again. Why? Because this is the kingdom. And the waters will break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. And the burning sand shall become a pool in the first thirsty ground springs of water. In the haunt of jackals where they lie down, the grass shall become reeds 
and rushes. How would you like to go from a life that is sterile and barren, that is riddled with hardship, to see the blessing of God come to you? Who wouldn't want that, right? <laughs> the Pharisees, yeah, that's right. So this is why when John the Baptist is in prison, he hasn't yet been killed, but he's having second thoughts. He's like, I didn't think it was going to end this way. I thought the kingdom meant, you know, the, I'm going to announce the king, and then the king is going to come to power, and he's going to boot the Romans out, and uh, he's going to set up his kingdom, and it's all going to be hunky-dory. And so he sends his own disciples as messengers to Jesus, and they say to him, are you the one that was to come, or should we look for someone else? And what does Jesus say? Go tell John what you see and hear. And it says, at that very hour, Jesus healed the blind and the lame. Go tell John what's going on and remind him of what Isaiah had said. So, John, you're going to die, but you're going to die for a good cause. You did your job. You ran well. So the demons shrieked in terror when they saw Jesus. Have you come to destroy us before the appointed time? Yes, I have. The invasion is underway. The kingdom is breaking in. So when we're dealing with deliverance, it's the most direct and dramatic form of confrontation, conflict between the kingdom of God and the, uh, that other kingdom. Um, because the nature of this kind of healing, it's usually not enough just to drive out the demons. There's some aftercare necessary. That's its own subject matter. I don't really want to dwell on it today. I just want to mention it because I think many times we, we slip into thinking, if we can just drive the demons out, everything will be fine. No, we still have to rebuild everything that was, you know, their nest. All right. Um, so healing is even more than driving out demons. Fourth category, it is life from death. Now, in, e in the age to come, there will be no further death, and we are granted eternal life upon believing in Jesus, which means our body may die, but our spirit does not. Uh, we pass through the veil of death, and we come into that eternal life in fullness that was promised to us. But even in this life, we should have moments where we raise the dead. And uh, when I was in Armenia uh, just last week, we had a woman on our team from Europe. And um, she's a fireball. I, I, I mean, she's part of our training school, and she joins us by Zoom. And um, just she, she warmed all of our hearts. But uh, we were sitting at the table one day, and she said, I want to tell you my story of raising a baby from the dead. Well, it's not every day that people just drop that on you, right? So she had a friend who had been pregnant, and uh, they, they told her that her baby had died. And they knew this because there was no fetal heartbeat at all. Um, she subsequently talked to some midwives, and the midwives said, even without modern electronic sensing equipment, you can know if a baby is alive. Just put your ear on the woman's belly. You will hear the baby's heartbeat. But, of course, with modern instrumentation, it's far more sensitive than that, and they can determine it. So this mother had gone in, and the baby's heartbeat had stopped. So this woman on our team, um, she called the mother, prayed with her over the phone, but then she got on a train and went to the mother's house, and she said, I am absolutely not going to let this happen on my watch. Now, when she walked in, the dad was praying prayers like this. Oh, Lord, we accept what you send us, and no matter what happens, we will serve you. And, I mean, on the one hand, that's a good thing to pray, but on the other hand, it shows a, a clear lack of conviction that anything is going to happen here and now. And so this woman from our team, she walked in and she said to the dad, would you just please stop praying? Just d don't pray that. Just shh. And then she laid her hands on the, her friend's stomach and began to pray and rebuke death. And the next day, which, by the way, was seven days later, uh, the woman went back to get another check, and the baby had a normal heartbeat, and the child is now four years old. <laughs> 